Hello students, this is Dr. Fezan Mirza. In this video, I'm covering how chromatography can be used uh, in, in analyzing the products of enzyme degradation, enzyme hydrolysis of a substrate. This question is taken from October, November 2015, variant 53. Now the question was, amylases are enzymes that hydrolyze starch. There are three types of amylase, alpha amylase, beta amylase, gamma amylase. So if you read the description, this is told, it is told you alpha amylase hydrolyzed one for glycosidic bond randomly within amylose and amylopectin. It is uh, having an optimum pH of 6.7. Hydrolyzes, hydrolysis release disaccharides of varying number of glucose molecules, for example, disaccharide maltose, trisaccharide maltotriose, and so on and so forth. So multiple products of varying sizes can be produced from alpha amylase, coming to beta amylase. Beta amylase hydrolyzes one for glycosidic bond of both amylose and amylopectin releasing maltose only, and the, the pH is 4.5. So there is just single product of same size because all maltose will be of same size. Uh, gamma amylase. Gamma amylase hydrolyzed once a glycosidic bond present in amylopectin. It is having an optimum pH of 3.0. So if it's if it's a catalyzing if it's catalyzing reaction of breaking it into a amylopectin uh, at only so so there will be more than one products of varying sizes and their products will be large in size. So these are the this is the amylopectin chain shown to you amylose shown to you. Uh, the precise location where amylose the, the beta amylase and the gamma amylase or alpha amylase can act is provided to you. So it's the next, what do we do? They are asking to you, uh, a student investigated the effect of these enzymes on hydrolysis starch by incubating two percent of starch suspension by separately for each of these enzymes. The mixture was incubated for 60 minutes to allow reaction to be completed. This is to allow enzyme and substrate complexes to form and the substrate to break into products. Each mixture of enzyme starch was incubated 35 degrees, so temperature was kept constant at optimum pH of each enzyme accordingly because three different enzymes have three different pHs. After 60 minutes, samples of each mixture was removed using a capillary tube. The product of hydrolysis of each mixture were separated using chromatography using the same solvent. The products of the hydrolysis were located by spraying a chromatogram with the uh, with some with the same specific dye. Identify the independent variable in this investigation. So type of amylase because it's three types. So it will be this will be your cause here in this in the in this uh, different type of product formation. Identify three variables other than the chromatography solvent that uh, and the specific dye that the student has a standardized in this investigation. So if you just read through the information, so uh, 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 describe how the student might have standardized two of these variables. So you have to state three and then mention how two of those could be standardized. So temperature might have been in standard, the temperature might have been standardized using a water bath. Timer would have been used for following time. pH could have been standardized using buffers. So uh, you just need to add any description of any two, but you have to identify three. So although I have stated three and three both. Con so just to control the student could use for this investigation. So whenever using the enzyme uh, investigation, uh, the, the proper control always is using boiled enzyme because that's denatured enzyme to be added instead of the active enzyme. So this will this will just omit out the, catal the catalysis which is being carried out by the enzyme because the denatured enzyme cannot catalyze the same reaction anymore. Describe a method the student could use to prepare the use of chromatogram to, chromatograms to compare the changes in the products of hydrolysis uh, as a start with three different amylases over time. Your method should be detailed enough for the other person to use. Now, I have not written the details here. Uh, recall the details of chromatography for my other video. I'll share the link in this video as well. So what do we do? You will you will just make sure that you will take one enzyme, for example, alpha amylase, you incubate for 60 minutes uh, at 35 degrees Celsius, Celsius using that pH buffer with that particular starch 3.0 suspension. After 60 minutes, the products are then spotted onto a paper. You will take a filter paper and on the filter paper or the filter paper on this paper, you will make a line with a pencil from at the bottom two centimeter above the, the lower point. And at the center, you will place a small spot of the product using a capillary tube. So when you use a capillary tube, a small sample can be applied here in the center. You will allow it to air dry and keep it applying it three times, allowing it, every, uh, allowing it to air dry every time. Once this has been applied, what you can do next, you will have the jar in which the chromatogram solvent is prepared. You will hang your filter paper uh, in this and cover it with the lid so the so this does not evaporate. The volatile solvent will be there. You will keep the volume of the volatile solvent constant. The filter paper, the, the chromatogram must be hung in such a way that the line that you did draw initially must be above the solvent. So the solvent will start to rise up. It will dissolve this, this, these products and it will take them up and you can, you will allow it to be run, for example, for 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, take this out on the filter paper, mark the solvent front, 
the solvent front is the is the uh, distance to which the solvent traveled and you will have multiple spots of the products and the line that you did do it initially you will label you will just uh, uh, what you, you can do next is you can measure the solvent front and you can make you can measure the solute fronts as well and using these values you will calculate the rf value if you are measuring if you are mentioning rf value so you must mention the formula of rf value that rf value is the solute front divided by solvent front so if the formula is not stated you don't get the mark for mentioning rf value so this is for one enzyme repeated for the beta amylase and gamma amylase in the same way as well and sprayed with a specifying dye and repeat all these in three times because when you repeat them three times you take the mean rf values or no, not the rf values in fact in this you are counting the products uh, and not just the rf values so you can count the products and see the products spots as well Furthermore, the the uh, the time must be kept constant. The uh, the solvent must be kept constant, and for safety, uh, since you are using uh, these these uh, these uh, are these might be irritant. The solvent might be irritant. There might be fumes in it. So wear gloves can uh, to avoid any kind of irritation. Figure one point two shows the chromatograms produced for each of starch and enzyme mixtures after sixty minutes of incubation. Chromatogram A, B, and C. In A, you have one product. In of one product means this one product was soluble and it traveled this much distance. In the second, you have so many products as make means different size products are there and they have traveled to different distances. In the last one, you have just a limited number of products and they all stayed near the origin because probably they are very large in size. That's why they are not really moving. So you need to identify according to the description that I already mentioned in the first for the first slide. Alpha amylase gave you most products of varying sizes. Beta gave you a single product of the same size. Gamma gave you more than one product of varying sizes, large. So if you try to just figure this out, this is what your uh, your table should look like. That beta, alpha, and gamma amylase actually are A, B, and C in the very order. Explain how you decide the H chromatogram. Show the results of hydrolyzing starch with each type of amylase. So we know that alpha amylase break most bonds. Most number of different size products will be formed. Beta amylase produce single product maltose seen as a single spot. Alpha amylase break one six bond. So variety of products are formed uh, because of that. Uh, so not not the alpha, the gamma amylase. So this gamma amylase actually tells us that how this uh, multiple products are, uh, are, there, are, these are the multiple products here, you can see of varying sizes uh, at the near the origin. So that's all from my side in this video. I hope this uh, video was helpful for you. Do attempt this question yourself so you get the idea of how the chromatography uh, questions are to be handled. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much.